Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have here a Renault Capture with a check injection error on the dash. Okay, inside the vehicle, start it up. Check injection system. Spanner light is on, it's lost power. So I've been told, I haven't taken on a test drive yet, it's literally just showing up. So first thing I'm gonna do is just run the diagnostics. So I've got this tool I'm using at the minute, it's the SmartSafe iSmartLink 801. Uh, we'll run diagnostic, uh, auto detect. It's a really good tool this. Um, just been given it for demonstration purposes, like ST08 it says on the, on the back. So I'm not sure if it's an ST08 or is it the I, whatever that was. Um, yeah, it's a really good tool. I've used it now on a dozen cars so far. Um, battery is amazing on it, which is very good for being mobile. Um, only thing that I would say is it just doesn't it doesn't have a mount that I can mount it on the steering, so I've got to just hold it on my leg. It's not too much of a big deal if you're uh, just doing your own checks, but if if you're trying to record like I'm doing here, it's, it can be a pain. So we're going to search for health reports, see what comes up on this. And what I will say is this car was purchased uh, two days ago from a dealership and it apparently had a AA inspection check. Now AA inspection checks, I'm not running them down because I used to do a couple of um, used car checks here and there for people. I don't really like doing them for this type of reason. You can check a car over and it can all seem fine until you do two, three hundred miles in it and then suddenly all these faults start appearing. Then if you've checked the car you get people saying oh you checked it you told me it was good and whatever. You can only tell what's good at the time. Things change day to day. Okay so we've got two common issues which is differential pressure sensor circuit so maybe a dead sensor or a block DPF. Preheat and diagnostic, which is going to be the glow plugs P0389 038096. Sorry, very common. I've done loads of these on different models of these Renaults, so I know what I'm going to be looking at. Let's press on here and see if we can get some live data. Give me some idea of what's going on with the DPF. I'm going to search for differential pressure. And the soot. Well, we have zero reading and only seven grams of soot, which is normal to zero reading. I wouldn't be expecting to see. So let's see if that moves once we accelerate it. No, it doesn't. So we've either got a dead sensor or something else going on. Let's get that up. Oh, so it looks quite compact. We've got this pipe running over the top. We can't even check the glow plugs without removing all of this. Um, so it doesn't look too complicated to get this off really, but DPF pressure sensor is going to be a right pain in the, in the rear because it's down there behind the turbo. The car has arrived hot, so I'm going to struggle to get my hand in there without getting a burn on me. Let me just see if I can feel it. Where are we? Oh, yeah, I can feel the sensor down here. Is that a... feels like... I'm not sure if that's the DPF pressure sensor holes I'm feeling. Or is it something else? might have a split hose actually these are common you got two tubes they they are common for splitting just notice this third wiper arm sitting there okay so I'm just removing this inlet pipe here okay so I've disconnected the air intake I'm trying to get this box out of the back because I'm gonna try and attempt to get round the back here if I can to the sensor uh, the box doesn't want to come out without removing the battery so we still can't get it out. Um, gonna try maybe if we take off the holes completely. Otherwise, it looks like all of this scuttle is gonna have to come off. Okay, so a bit of wiggling, we managed to get it twisted around. Now we can get that out. 
Okay, I'm going to try and get you around the back down there. Let's see if we can see. Well, I'm trying to see if I can see the sensor as well. There it is. I need to check if that those hoses are burst. If the hoses aren't burst, then we might need a new sensor. Okay, so I've managed to get the spring clips off of the sensor. I'm going to try and get that off now. I've used this camera here, the Kai Weight camera. Um, this is a 360 degree, you can rotate the camera from here. I'll put the link to this in the video description again. I've got a, I think it's like a 10% discount code for this or something. I'll put that in the video if you're interested in looking at one of those. So we've got a DPF pressure reading of around three and a half. I've got that connected to the sensor down here. Well actually when I tighten it down it's going up to about six. But it, that's pretty normal. Let me just check the other side. So we've got between one to two millibars there. So just come away from the engine noise for a minute. So we have what looks pretty normal pressure within the DPF. Um, this one, the sensor looks pretty black, but it looks like this sensor is is not working. Okay, so it's really difficult to show you because the sensor, the cable is so short around the back, but we've got five volts. Um, we've got an earth on the sensor itself, on the cable, so we're going to go ahead and get a new sensor plugged into this. Okay, so we have a replacement sensor on. We are now getting a three millibars reading. I was sort of being suspicious if it's had a DPF delete, because that, that can happen if you get a DP, DPF delete, you don't get any sort of pressure sensor reading on here. Um, you shouldn't get a DPF fault if it's had a remap, but you never know. I don't know much about remap and if it's, maybe it's had a a bad remap or whatever, but it doesn't look like that's the case anyway. Oh, it looks like we've got a, a code up here on this. Hopefully they've got the um, code for that. So DPF pressure looks a little bit low. 3000 RPM. Just checking on the exhaust tip. It's probably always worth checking these first, but yeah, that is clean. Nothing wrong with that. Got some white sort of dust in there from, from the AdBlue, but there's no particle soot in there. My hands are already black. Right, I've disconnected these clips. You gotta just, there again, they're sort of spring clips. You gotta just pop them out and you can disconnect the hoses. So we've got that disconnected. Okay, some more wiggling and a couple of bolts. Later we've got this plastic cover off. I'm hoping the glow plugs are down here, no? Yes, there we have uh, one, two, three and four glow plugs. We're gonna get these out now. So I'm not sure if you can see there, but there's quite a bit of dust down around these um, glow plugs. So I'm just gonna blow them out. So none of it falls falls down there when, once I um, remove the glow plug. I don't want any dust falling down the, down the hole. So testing these glow plugs. Three are working and this one over here is faulty. We've not got no continuity between that. Okay, that's uh, four glow plugs fitted in. I think, I've, I, think I'm, I forgot to record that bit, but they're in. We've got the old ones here. Pretty straightforward. Remove them, plug the new ones in. So I've just found something really shocking. Renault, first one I've ever seen. The upstream pressure pipe isn't blocked. It's got a bit of movement on it, so it's not blocked. Okay, so this car has had a new sensor, it's had new glow plugs. I've put a little bit of DPF cleaner down through the intake pipe, uh, upstream pressure pipe there, just to, to make sure that it, it doesn't block up in the future anytime soon. There was tiny amounts of pressure, but nothing really, it wasn't blocked. Um, okay, so we just need to get back inside, I suppose, and reset the fault codes, just verify that everything's working on live data. And it should be most of it. Okay, back inside, we clear the fault memory. Right, so I've had to start again with this um, Renault Capture here. Basically, it's all working okay, but obviously on the test drive, I'm looking at the live data, it's pressure is just too low. I'm taking the sensor back out. I didn't record all this, so I was just having a look back through just to double check everything, what's going on. And I'll show you here, as I've pulled out the sensor, I've sort of pulled out the hoses to have a look. And as I was pulling them out, we've got one here that's literally came in two halves. So yeah, 
what I've done is put a new hose, new set of hoses on there. Um, tougher hoses than these. Um, I'll show you some of the hoses that I've used. So these hoses, you have to get them from Renault. Really hard to get hold of. Plus, if you look at it, very soft. It's no wonder they just disintegrate. So what I've replaced it with is a piece of this fuel hose. It's toughened, so it doesn't really bend. Uh, it's just generic fuel hose there. So that's what I've used. We've replaced that. Okay, quick test drive done. All is okay now with the Renault Capture. Yeah, we'll move on to this Audi next and I'll see you on our next video.